Hi there. In this video, I'll be covering the Dragon Claw from Heretic. This is the rough equivalent to the chain gun in Doom. It fires slower, but has the potential to do more damage. It also has a fire mode with the Tome of Power that is more niche than the previous weapons I've covered up to this point. Before I begin, I should probably clarify something about the damage outputs I mentioned in my previous videos. The pseudo RNG tends to favor higher numbers, so it's highly unlikely that you'll actually need the maximum amount of hits to kill each enemy with so and so weapon I mentioned in each prior video. The practical maximum amount of hits to kill an enemy might be somewhere around the median of minimum and maximum hits. I'll be mentioning the medians of damage from now on, in addition to some other numbers. Consider applying the medians to all the other numbers I mentioned in my previous videos, your homework. Anyways, I'll still be mentioning this theoretical maximum just for the people who manage to pull off that nine possible amount of unluckiness, or those loonies who use a hex editor or something to make all the weapons consistently deal their lowest damage. I know you're out there, you masochists. I should also apologize for any mathematical errors I have made in my videos. Although most of it is technically correct, some of it practically isn't. Sorry guys, I'm more of a historian than a mathematician. I guess I'm a nerd either way. Alright, with all that said, let's begin. This is the Dragon Claw, the second ranged weapon you may find on your journey. Its magic is so fast that any shot from it tends to connect instantaneously with an enemy. In other words, it's a hit scan weapon. Quite a useful one too. It's great for dealing damage to low to mid tier enemies, and even has its uses against bosses. This weapon will most likely be your second workhorse weapon next to the ethereal crossbow. As long as you have ammo for both, you'll be putting out quite a consistent amount of damage. Not too many people complain about this weapon, except for its fire sound. Well, let's just call it an acquired taste. Anyways, something you should look out for when firing this thing is the fact that it shows off a different pop sprite depending on what you hit. One for when you actually hit an enemy, and another for when you miss and hit a wall or something. Quite a useful visual indicator to show whether or not you're doing damage from afar. A very cool thing you can do with the Dragon Claw, as well as the Elven Wand, is shoot either of them while hiding behind certain corners in decorative sprites. Projectile throwing enemies will most likely be unable to hit you this way, but you can hit them due to the hitscan not being blocked by decorative sprites or corners. I call this the hitscan Harry technique. Just imagine a guy who does this thing all the time. That's Hitscan Harry. Depending on the RNG, you can do anywhere between 4 to 32 damage per shot, or a medium of 18 damage. It's fast enough to do 350 shots per minute, or about 5.83 shots per second. With that in mind, you can do between 20 to 160 damage per second, or somewhere around 90 DPS. That's only considering the 5 shots you'll do in one second, so you can add an extra shot in every now and then. Like the Elven Wand, it loses precision when firing continuously, but can also aim perfectly if you wait for the animation to finish. Unlike the Chain Gun, the Dragon Claw only shoots one shot per every push of the fire button. Considering the damage per shot of the Dragon Claw, this could either be a blessing or a curse depending on the RNG. The Elven Wand's lowest damage is still more than the Dragon Claw's, so if you aren't feeling confident in its damage output when sniping, it might be time for you to switch back to the wand for a bit. When using the Tome of Power, this weapon's fire mode changes in a rather drastic way. Each shot will take up 5 ammo instead of 1, and it shoots a projectile that deals 2 to 16 damage, which upon contact with an enemy also shoots up to 8 other projectiles called Rippers that can deal 1 to 8 damage for every tick there inside an enemy. Yes, ticks. The projectiles move so fast that they might as well be hitscan. They travel at 6440 map units per second. That's fast enough to travel through most maps in a second or two. The Rippers are much slower, traveling at 490 map units per second, or 14 map units per tick. Every tick there inside an enemy counts though. Consider how big each enemy is when firing at them. Theoretically, if a Ripper is inside an enemy for one second, it can do 35 to 280 damage with a medium of 157 rounded down. Unrealistic, yes, but that shows you how much damage these things can potentially do. Regardless of the damage output, 
The way they travel in 8 directions makes this fire mode best against wide open areas with numerous enemies. Just make sure you have enough ammo to invest in it though. As mentioned in the Wadden video, the Dragon Claw has its own ammo supply. These are Claw Orbs and Energy Orbs. When you first pick up the Dragon Claw, you'll get 30 or 45 ammo depending on the difficulty, since the lowest and highest difficulties will give you 150% ammo. Each Claw Orb will give you 10 or 15 depending on the difficulty, while each Energy Orb will give you 25 or 37. Disciples of the Sparrow and Iron Liches have a chance to drop Claw Orbs too, which will help reimburse you when fighting them with the Dragon Claw. However, there's an interesting thing to mention when fighting the Liches that I'll cover when we get to their section. One more thing that I should mention is that the Dragon Claw is a magical weapon. Due to this, as well as its high damage output, it is great against ghost enemies, so fire away at them with this weapon if you want. Alright, time for some damage calculations. The gargoyles as usual are easy to take down. With 40 health, they go down to 2-10 to 10 unpowered shots, with somewhere around 6 hits being your practical maximum. That's enough to take them down in a little over a second. I'd probably still use the wand against these guys, personally to reserve the claw's higher damage output for greater enemies. Unless I'm using the powered up Dragon Claw. The projectile alone will take 3 to 20 hits with a medium of 12 to kill these guys. But remember the rippers spawn with it. With the rippers alone, you need 5 to 40 ticks worth of damage to kill them. Or a medium of 23 ticks. Remember that ticks are 1 35th of a second. So that is perfect for these weak enemies if you can get multiple rippers to pass through them. As for the fire gargoyle with its 80 health, It'll take 3 to 20 shots, with somewhere around 12 being your practical maximum. These guys are good to use a Dragon Claw on due to their higher health pool. Of course, you'll need 5 to 40 powered up projectile hits alone, with a medium of 23 to kill these guys. But once again, the Rippers can kill them in 10 to 80 ticks, or a median of 45 ticks. The Golems will provide similar stats, but as usual, they are bigger, so it's harder to miss. Not only that, but their increased size will probably allow a few more ticks of damage to be done upon them by the Rippers. Nitro Golems with their 100 health will take 4 to 25 unpowered hits, with your most realistic highest amount of hits being somewhere around 15. With the powered shot alone, you'd theoretically need 7 to 50 hits with a medium of 29, but thankfully you can always count on the Rippers to do damage too. You need them to hit the Nitro Golems for around 13 to 100 ticks with a rounded up medium of 57 on their own though. The Bony Bros with their 200 health will need 7 to 50 unpowered shots with a medium of 29. The powered up projectile would need 13 to 100 shots with a medium of 57 on its own. But the Rippers on their own would need 25 to 200 ticks with a rounded up medium of 113. It may take around 3 seconds to kill each Undead Warrior, if you go by the medium DPS of 90 I mentioned earlier in the video. Probably your most realistic estimate of how long it'd take to kill these guys with continuous Dragon Claw fire. Give or take a second or two depending on your luck. The Disciples, with 180 health, will need less shots. 6 to 45 unpowered ones, with a medium of 26, or 12 to 90 solo powered ones with a medium of 51. Add in the Rippers, and you'll need to do way less shots than that, of course. Rippers alone will need to pass through these guys for 23 to 180 ticks, with a rounded up medium of 102. Either way, you can reimburse some of your ammo by killing these guys. You'll get 10 or 15 ammo depending on the difficulty, so there's a chance of you getting more ammo from killing these guys than you spend on them. Just remember that the powered up shots take 5 ammo each. Use them wisely! Now for the Saber Claws. With 150 health, they go down in 5 to 38 empowered shots with a medium of 22. 10 to 75 powered projectile shots with a medium of 43 could theoretically take down a Saber Claw too. But as usual, the Rippers are the main investment here. The Rippers would need to pass through the Saber Claws for 19 to 150 ticks with a medium of 85. Good thing these guys bundle up quite easily, so the powered up claw is pretty good in getting those spiked magic balls of death stuck in them. Were Dragons with their 220 health will go down in 7 to 55 unpowered shots with a medium of 31. They'll require a theoretical 14 to 110 shots with the powered projectile alone with a medium of 62. However, never forget the factor in the Rippers. They need 28 to 220 ticks with a medium of 124 worth of damage to kill with those balls alone. So either iteration of the Dragon Claw isn't the worst for killing them either. 
just remember they drop ethereal crossbow ammo, so you could probably use that weapon against them with better results. Ophidians with their beefy 280 health will take 9 to 70 hitscan shots to put down, with a medium of 40 being your more realistic highest amount. Still quite a lot, but just remember the shots per second this thing can put out. With the power projectile alone, you'd need 18 to 140 with a medium of 79. With the rippers alone, you need 35 to 280 ticks with a rounded up medium of 158 to put them down. They're still quite manageable, but some other weapons are best reserved for these guys if you don't have a lot of free Dragon Claw ammo to spend on them. Now for the bosses. The Iron Liches are an interesting case. With 700 health, they go down in 22 to 175 unpowered shots. 99 shots is probably a ballpark estimate of your more realistic highest amount of shots required to kill them. They need 44 to 350 powered shots with a medium of 197 too. However, the Iron Liches are resistant to rippers. Yes, resistant, if not outright immune. They'll only take 0 to 1 damage per tick from the rippers. At best, you need 700 ticks worth of damage to kill the Iron Liches, but most of the time your powered up claw will just tickle them at best. Not the best investment, but at least they drop claw worms, right? Right? Just shoot them with the unpowered version, please. Beefy Bull Boys with their 3000 health will go down in 94 to 750 unpowered shots. 422 will probably be the more likely highest amount of shots required though. With the powered projectiles, it take 188 to 1500 shots with a medium of 844. However, the Molotars aren't resistant to the Rippers, so it take 375 to 3000 ticks with a medium of 1688 to kill them. Probably a better idea to either not use the claw on them, or to use it in tandem with other weapons. Likewise is the case with the Sparrow. His Serpent has 2000 health, so it'll go down in 63 to 500 shots, with a medium of 282 being your most likely highest amount of shots needed. The powered projectiles alone will take 125 to 1000 shots, with a medium of 563. Sheesh, and this is just the first phase. The Rippers will need to pass through the Serpent for 250 to 2000 ticks, with a medium of 1125 being your most likely highest amount. Since there aren't any other enemies in the arena during this stage, the Powered Up Claw is not a good investment during it. The Sparrow himself has 3500 health, so he'll need 110 to 875 shots, with a medium of 493 to put down. With a Power Projectile, he'd need a theoretical 219 to 1750 shots, with a medium of 985 shots required to put down. The Rippers would need a pass room for 438 to 3500 ticks, with a medium of 1969 ticks being a more realistic high. This fight is an interesting case because it gives you quite a dilemma. Do you focus the Sparrow himself with the hitscan properties of the Unpowered Claw? Or do you power it up to both damage him as well as kill the disciples he'll continuously spawn throughout the fight? Personally, I'd go for focusing the Sparrow directly with the Claw, while letting his disciples damage him a bit too. I just hope you can dodge a bunch of purple magic missiles though if you try this strategy. Totally viable on Black Plague though. So that's the Dragon Claw, the second real hit scam weapon of the game. On its own, I found its best use is to pick off enemies susceptible to stunlock due to its fast fire rate, eliminating ghost enemies due to its magical properties, and sniping stronger enemies due to its hit scan nature and potentially high damage output. Powered up, it's great for clusters of enemies in wide open spaces, but virtually useless against Iron Liches. Just shoot that unpowered version against them. And when you're around corners and behind props, remember to always put your faith in Hitscan Harry. That's all I have for you guys for now. The next video in this series will be covering the Hell Staff. If you liked the video, thumb it up. If you want, you can support me with a coffee in the description. Never necessary, but always appreciated. Thanks for watching, and until next time, toodaloo.